Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of converting the Nerf Rapid Strike into this Destiny New Monarchy Faction Auto Rifle. Let's do this. All right, I'm working on a little bit of the internals for the uh, Nerf Rapid Strike right here. So this is the dark pusher mechanism, and I'm uh, adding in some scrap. You know, we've got old parts from uh, parts from other uh, Nerf guns. This is just a three was a three terminal uh, switch. I just clipped off one of them, put a negative, which is the blue line, positive there, and this is an open circuit. So right now, as the, but the button is out everything is connected and then it disconnects when the button's pushed in. Um, so either way, it gets the effect that I want. I'm, I cut out with the uh, Dremel cutting wheel, I just cut out a slot here, a little bit in the top half of the clamshell, and I'm going to insert this switch uh, and push it up against here because as this mechanism works, you see, this is what does the dark pushing. Boom. Right there, when it gets to that point, then the button's pushed, and this moves around really rapidly to push through those darks. When that's activated, I've got, I'm, I'm going to have a whole three different uh, bright LEDs on the ends uh, connected to this wire that create a really cool muzzle flash in the uh, jam door and in the uh, the muzzle vents on the gun. That'll look really cool. So every time a dart, every time this pusher cycles. It'll uh, flash a light there, so it'll be cool. I'm gonna insert it here, and then uh, I've got some uh, JB Weld epoxy putty, about five bucks, hardware store. You just squish it together, and then it sets really fast. Great stuff for uh, putting in switches and things. I'm gonna set it in here, press it in, smush some epoxy putty on it right there, and then mount the clamshell, and then uh, go from there. Hey guys, uh, here's my uh, next phase on my modification of the Nerf Rapid Strike. Um, Destiny, uh, new new Monarchy faction uh, build here. Uh, so I previously did the paint job on it. Now I'm going to be working on all the internals. Uh, I'm adding a few uh, fun LEDs for a nice bright muzzle flash upon launching the darts. So what I've got going on here is I've um, I've routed out. I cut out a few spots right here. I'm sure if you guys can see it. But, um, <laughs> where did I put those bars? Ah, right here. I've got a little hole drilled right here in between these posts. Um, and then I've also, um, I plan on putting in one of these little red LEDs right here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. But, uh, yeah, there we go. One of the 5mm uh, accent LEDs. You can get them on Amazon. I'll try and put the link in the description for all these different parts uh, later on. But I'm going to be putting those inside. Um, I'm going to be putting one here, and then get these out of the way. I've got the jam door slide. This is what it's going to be lighting up. I thought I didn't have any orange, so red was the next best thing. But I'm going to be uh, installing it just inside here on the jam door, um, as well as uh, up here in the muzzle flash. I'm going to be putting. Um, did a cutaway and putting one right here so I'll have that and then one inside the jam door area um, and as I had showed previously I put the uh, switch on the wire <laughs> here's all the components but here is the uh, the dark pusher mechanism and as I sh uh, showed you guys previously I uh, epoxied in a switch I got the positive and the negative leads here uh, that's going to go out to these lights uh, so every time the inner mechanism pushes against that button, it'll uh, fire off on and off these uh, lights, giving it that muzzle flash effect, which should be uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to do um, a little bit of the soldering today um, and get all these uh, electronics put back into here and uh, see how everything turns out. So uh, here goes. All right. Um, now I've started to, uh, over here, started to solder the um, LED wires and then I'm uh, hot gluing them in place. So I'm gonna camera and have you guys take a look here. So right here, I got one of them right there with the uh, positive and negative leads going off. I believe 
When you get the 5mm LEDs, the longer stem is the positive, the shorter is the negative, uh, and that's how you'd wire them uh, properly. And so I just uh, snipped, snipped it down like this, basically. Um, I just they have long uh, tines on them, and I just uh, bent them because I needed it to kind of angle down that way, and then uh, soldered the wires on. And I, of course, I've got some heat shrink um, that I put on there. I'll try and put a link in the description of all these stuff: the wire, the heat shrink, all that. I've got a big mega pack right here all sorts of heat shrink sizes and colors um, that I use in all my wiring. Um, so I've got that one set and in place and then I'm going to put another one um, just just over here behind this post and then I'm going to be uh, tacking those together and then it's going to cross over to this gun, this side of the gun here the helping hands out of the way. I'm using these by the way. You can get these two helping hands. Awesome uh, use for uh, any wiring you're going to do. Ah, here we go. And then, see I've got that cut away. It's going to cross from there over to this one. And I'm bridging it with another LED. I'm going to have just right here. Same, uh, I've got a little hole drilled in right there. See, there it is. And that's where I'm going to feed. So the LED is going to be just inside this back that jam door just inside on the other side here so it shines and lights up that jam door along with the other one on this side of the clamshell um, and then I'm going to link those up together and then have them so basically all four of these will be linked together and then I can run a just a single positive and negative LED lead down here into the, the wireway tray here which will be covered up with this little plate here and then it feeds down behind all the other uh, components. There'll be a, a trigger component and then the dark flicker component here. It's gonna run behind all this stuff and then tack on positive and negatives here. Let me grab this, all my stuff here for you. I'm trying to multitask with my camera on the pad, my pad here. Um, got the dart pusher here. There's my flywheel. And right here, this is the trigger mechanism. I don't want to put it on this because that goes to the rev motor there. There's a brake there. I want to tack it onto this board. This little bulb right here is my um, positive lead up top here. And then the bottom is my, uh, right here, this is that, that little silver area down here is the negative lead. You can see a black wire there. And then that green wire, I um, can't remember if I did a, another video on this where I, I actually put this green wire in uh, to that from that negative all the way down to this little um, negative contact down here. What that does is it actually engages the flywheel motor to stop electrically so it doesn't just spin freely on friction. It stops uh, a lot better that way. A um, little trick I learned. Um, anyhow, once again, back to it positive tag, this little one right here, that's the positive, that's the negative. Um, that's where I'm going to take those two leads and run run it all the way through those that wire tray up into here. Uh, so that when I connect the battery, power should go to the LEDs, and then every time that, um, just right there, that, that's the dark pusher, every time that that button it, I installed inside is engaged, the tap causes those LEDs to blink and create that uh, really cool muzzle flash while it's uh, shooting the darts. So I'm going to uh, continue on and do some more of the finish up soldering on the uh, LED lights. Okay, I'm back again working on this uh, Nerf Rapid Strike modification. Uh, the format might be a little different on the film because I was using the uh, a Kindle <laughs> the other night. And then, because uh, the battery on this camera here was uh, dead, but now I'm back to the camera. Um, now, if you guys noticed, but I pulled out all the diffuser here. I took a further look at it, and upon testing it right here, um, it wasn't lighting fully on these diffusers. I noticed these little black plastic brackets in the molding. Well, I'm going to shave, take my trusty dusty Dremel, and shave these off 
So I have a complete open line here and just put one solid diffuser panel. Again, I'm using that, uh, well, this stuff right here. Um, it's a plastic file divider you can get in the stationary area of any store. And it's just made out of frosted clear plastic. And I just cut strips of that and put that in there. It's a great diffuser for, to have even lighting. So I'm going to sand these down, put the diffuser here, and then re-hot glue these LEDs back in. And then this piece slides in over that. Well, what I'm going to do, conveniently, there's this nice, neat panel that goes right over where these vents are. Well, I'm going to put a piece of tin foil right there to reflect and, and uh, enhance that light coming off. So when it lights up, it'll hit this reflection and bounce back onto this diffuser. So in theory, it should give it a really uh, even brighter, even lighting this whole length of the vent when we get that muzzle flash. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to go do that really quick, be right back, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, I'm back again here. Um, had a little fiasco. I forgot to put a resistor on the main um, positive line going to the battery and blew out my LEDs. Remember to do that. Um, usually when you buy the 5mm LEDs, it will come with uh, resistors. A, a, probably a quarter, quarter watt, half watt. Uh, resistor will do. You can go online uh, and do any uh, resistor calculator and find out what you need for that. But make sure you do that before you touch the uh, power source. I'm using an 11.1 volt LiPo. It'll charge up to 12 volts. Uh, so it's quite a bit going through there. But anyhow, uh, pulled all the stuff out, rewired it with some uh, white LEDs that are actually much brighter so I'll get a better flash in that muzzle, that uh, orange, clear orange jam door and then a white muzzle flash. It should look pretty cool there. Um, but then I got them all hot glued in place and wired um, and then what I did also to enhance it is I took the other piece that goes well, let's see here best example goes this one this one goes there okay so this piece right here it lays in uh, so you guys can see that right in here and the LED I placed there's my diffuser and the LED with the cats in the background oh gosh okay I took some tin foil and I taped it right into this section that's where the um, venting windows are and so then the light should reflect off this and then back onto the diffuser and, and uh, hopefully uh, enhance the lighting that flows through there uh, for that muzzle flash effect. So I did that on both sides, wired everything in, and um, well next is just taking all the uh, internals and putting them back in and uh, I'll kind of show you guys how I uh, modified um, that as well to uh, enhance the power uh, for that. Okay, I'm back again here. I'm gonna start uh, putting this thing together. Sorry, got the uh, camera stand here and the seat. Squeeze in here. Uh, so here goes. I'm just gonna start assembling stuff, and uh, and then I'll when I get to the electronics here, I'm gonna talk you guys through it and show you what I did to modify this thing to uh, really ramp up the power. So. Another good thing I suggest when you're modding your your Nerf guns um, is to uh, use your your cell phone and take photos when you open it up, so you get a whole um, layout. Take multiple photos of all the sections and stuff that you can refer to, so you can go back to it and put it together. Um, so I'm gonna do that and start um, reassembling it.
Okay, <clears throat> before I continue uh, putting this all the way together, I need to show you guys some of the modification here. Um, on this, this is the dart pusher. I think earlier on in the video, you guys saw the internals of what that looked like. Um, over here, the motor that has that little, uh, what do they call it, the coil gear. Um, not sure if I'm getting that term right. Any, anyhow, it kind of looks like a little curly macaroni. That um, the spiral gear that this motor runs to activate the dart pusher. There used to be a little uh, circuit board, of uh, basically a resistor board right here. Well, I just unsoldered that and then resoldered the contacts, the negative and the positive, back to the motor and took that out of the way because again that restricts the power. Took that off of there. Um, as well as, of course, the, uh, the flywheel cage. There was a resistor here. Uh, it was kind of, there's a little melted post right here, a melted plastic. I had to kind of break that off and fidget with it. I un unsoldered all the contacts there, took that resistor board off, and then rewired it again, you know, in parallel here with the, uh, the negatives, the positives, and then I have a line running off there back to. Uh, the uh, contacts over here, I believe you can always follow along with the wires whenever you work on stuff. Um, I have a great tutorial for this as well, I'll put that that I that I picked up from it. Um, and I'll put that link in the description, follow the lines, and make sure it's all tacked in correctly. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just took off the, uh, the restrictors and then wired in the, the leads back in place. Um, and then that's it, just taking that off, that off and then um, <clears throat> adding a LiPo. So what I did right here is I tapped into it as well and put uh, a new connector. Um, I'll uh, try to remember to put the link in the description of where to get this uh, thick gauge wiring and these uh, male-female connectors for your uh, LiPo battery. And I, I put that in instead. Um, and then one of these uh, Turnigy 11.1 uh, LiPo packs I uh, modified the end of the connector as well here, and, and put the uh, male connector here, female connector here, and uh, that's ready to go to ramp up the power a whole lot. Um, hence this, working together with removing all these resistors, gives it way more power, um, which when I demo it, you guys will see that. So uh, back to it here on the assembly, um, I'm going to just put it all together, just wanted to show you guys that, that's pretty much the, uh, the cheap way to uh, just modify your gun. I'm going to try and do more uh, videos like this. Actually Chandler and I are going to try and do more videos like this. Uh, just on the cheaper end, so you have to sit there and pour a ton of money into it, but just use what you've got. Uh, and try and keep it, you know, under $20 to upgrade these, uh, these Nerf guns. Um, but again, uh, here we go. careful when you take these little outer shells off right in here you'll see these little tiny plastic clips are kind of shallow but uh, just take care when you um, pry them apart with a flathead or just kind of wedge it up uh, from underneath the shell here um, but yeah you're probably gonna need a a uh, flathead screwdriver just to kind of wedge up under the edge the end here where they connect and just kind of pry it apart and uh, gradually undo these little uh, these clip things and just let them pop one at a time uh, to take that out. So, uh, yep, just a little side note. 
All right, back to it. Uh, I put a couple troughs in here, but then I realized I just had to kind of take it out from behind the shell and out in front. That's really all I had to do. Uh, luckily, the, the little troughs I put in here are hidden, but they can be used for other things later on. Anyhow, I didn't need to do that. Just needed to take the shell off and wind the wire back behind here and then put them back in. And then, now I can see, now I can clamshell it and it can kind of tuck behind here along the sides of the barrel and be fine. So uh, that worked fine. Okay, I wanted to keep enough uh, slack right here so if I needed to do any repairs I could open it up like this and put it back in. Um, so continuing on with the assembly. Okay, okay uh, one pause for a second. Uh, and again, you'll probably find this when you're in process of modding. I don't want to completely assemble this just yet. Uh, because I've got to take my uh, switch leads here, as you um, and you can go back and check that previous video on how I did this. Um, to uh, this is the activation switch inside here to create that muzzle flash with these LEDs. So I've got to take take my um, positive and negative leads from those LEDs right here and uh, solder them up. Uh, correctly with the switch here. Uh, what I've got to do now in order to get this to work correctly is this is a breaker basically in the uh, in the uh, circuit. When it's uh, completely, the little button's completely retracted, it's the circuit's connected, feeds power, it lights up. When it's, dip, when it's pressed down, it turns it off. And so every time that this taps the button, it creates that blink. In order for me to get that, <laughs> I put a blue wire, a dark wire, and then a red wire, but these have both got to basically be positive, so in hindsight I probably would have done like a lighter, you know, another red or a pink wire. Uh, they both got to be positive, and uh, so that the positive feed to these lights are broken, creating the blink, and then this negative ground to the LEDs, I just tack on. If you follow the wires, you'll see that down here is the uh, negative ground. Um, and then uh, and, um, what I did also is this little green wire I installed myself. It'll be in that tutorial I put on uh, the link in the description too. Uh, he explains it does a great job. Um, putting this green wire in, tacking the negative here to the rev motor, and the ground out right here on the dark pusher. Um, what this creates uh, is it uses some of the battery power for this flywheel to stop the wheels kind of like a brake, if you will, rather than just letting it spin itself out. Uh, so it's a nice start-stop, and you get a nice fire and a really quick stop of these wheels. It functions a lot better that way. So again, if you tack on a wire from here, this the ground on this circuit board here, follow it all the way along. Correction, not to here, but um, to this, to the uh, little circuit board right down here. You'll see off to the side there's a little... Uh, another third contact, third terminal right there down and in, into here. Uh, that's what you want to ground out to from that uh, pad all the way up to this pad to create to get that operation there. Um, so back to this. The ground. Uh, I'm going to run down along this wireway and come around behind and tack into that uh, negative um, the, the ground out right there on the pad. Um, and then this positive I'm going to connect to, I, I believe either wire is fine. Uh, I'm going to connect to this wire here um, and then this one <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to run in behind here and tack that to this top part. That's the positive uh, pad right there. You can even see if you guys can look close and um, this is stock too. You'll see a red wire running on the other side there, tacked into that board. Um, that's the feed to the um, the battery and the motor, everything else. That's the direct battery feed right there um, for that dart pusher. So I'm going to tack my uh, positive right there. So uh, continuing on, I'm going to need to uh, fire up my soldering iron here. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back at it here. I've got um, I just kind of put everything in place, lined up the barrel, pushed the motor down, um, ran the lead through here in this tray, and then put everything, this is, this is the uh, 
the cover. It's going to put every, the wire away cover right here. So that will get all those wires out of the way. I uh, took the LED lead, positive lead, wove it behind this trigger mechanism underneath here. So it comes out here. The negative comes out here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, solder the, the um, negative lead right there to that. Uh, con the negative contact, like it says there, the um, positive lead to the LEDs. It's going to be this little blue wire. That's part of the switch. I'm going to solder those two together, and then this red wire here. I'm going to bring down to the pad right here, which is the direct battery feed there. So then we've got battery going through here, passing on to here, going through to the LEDs, lighting them up. When the button inside here is pushed down, breaks the circuit, turns them off, hence the, the flash. So with that, I'm going to do some clipping and pre-tinning with the soldering iron and uh, put those together. I went ahead and, um, like from last we talked here, I uh, soldered that blue wire. That's the um, one of the two positives on this switch here from the dart pusher. Um, I wired that into the positive lead, um, the positive lead of the LEDs over here, um, and then I took this other positive lead on the other side of the circuit here of the switch and then wired that into that little pad on the top uh, that just the positive feed of the main battery out here so that feeds all the way to that pad and then so I tacked that one in and then I took the um, the LED negative along that wire way behind the trigger mechanism and around the top and tacked that into the the negative pad lead of the board right there so that should do what I want it to do then. We get the full circuit feed, and then uh, when that button is tapped, we get that muzzle flash out here and in the, uh, the jam door area uh, when it's being fired. So I'm gonna continue on here and um, get, do a couple of uh, reassemblies here, and then um, just give it kind of a test run and uh, see how things work. All right, back again. I've got everything together here. I've got it all screwed down. I went ahead and put a clip in place so I can uh, engage the, um, I don't even know if I needed to really. Um, anyhow, put a clip in place because I don't think, I, I think I took out all the lock, uh, lock restrictors and everything. Uh, but what happens is there's a safety mechanism. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to take it out. Didn't do it, just kept it simple. But you have to hold down the rev button while you hold down the trigger for the dart pusher there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to turn off these lights so you can kind of see a little bit of the flash here. And uh, here goes. I'm going to push down the rev. All right. Um, looks like I got everything uh, screwed down the way it needs to be. So now I'm going to just uh, put everything together. Real quick thing here, I noticed this wouldn't go together. It's because I put a screw right here. So, those of you working on these, just make sure this goes on after everything. So, let's try this again.
this, I had it assembled, but one thing to remember when you're putting this together is these little dealy bobbers right here, the Picatinny rails on the outside. Well, they screw in from the inside of the clamshell, so I had to take off the motor, all this, open it up. Make sure you get these put in first. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that. Put everything back, I'll spare you guys the time of fast motion assembly. You get the idea, you close it all up, put the screws in. So um, as soon as I get these things installed, I have these, of course, our favorite, these wonderful little clip tabs with those springs. Ugh. I like the other modified ones that have the actual molded plastic that's spring, you don't have to deal with as much things popping out, but I'm going to put all these back together, get the clamshell together, and then we're going to uh, go on to a, a demo of how this works. Alright everybody, here it is. I am using a 20 round barrel magazine with little valentine foam darts in it. Uh, just going to do a demonstration here and show you what this baby can do. So here it goes. All right, there you go. Now we're gonna do this one more time with the lights out so you can really see the lighting effect in that muzzle flash. Let's check that out. All right, so now we get the lights down a little bit so you can really see the muzzle flash, so here goes. All right, everybody, hope you enjoyed part two of that series of converting a Nerf Rapid Strike into this Destiny New Monarchy Faction Auto Rifle. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, please consider doing so by clicking on the icon here. Also click on the notification bell below so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. Damage Darts, signing off.